This video is not sponsored or paid for by Gibson, Epiphone, or any other company. All thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are Buddy Blues's own. The guitar was sent on loan for a review, no money exchanged hands, and it will be sent back to Gibson. Enjoy the video. What is up YouTube? My name is Buddy Blues and today we're looking at the Epiphone Jared James Nichols Blues Power. Welcome to another episode of Unbelievably Big Business Tuesday. If you know me from before, I'm the small business guy. This is the opposite. Jared James Nichols is relatively new in the in, in music, right? And in, in, in the whole entirety of music, but he's been a hurricane in the blues world. I'm sure you know him, and if you don't, you've, if you're in any sort of guitar-related music, you've seen him. Very tall, like he's seven and a half feet tall, long hair, looks like the Incredible Hulk, and he is an Incredible Hulk of a guitar player. But this isn't a video about Jared James Nichols, it's a video about his guitar. This is a Les Paul Custom with one pickup, one P90, in the bridge. There's a whole community, I think there's even an Instagram page called One Pickup Only. There's a whole community of people that love 
that. They love the whole Les Paul Jr. thing. They love the whole Les Paul custom, which is what this is with one P90. What have we got? We have one P90, just said it, wrap around bridge, this little thing, and volume and tone. Straightforward. The first time I plugged this in, it was very quiet. I've had a lot of guitars that have P90s. I even had a one pickup Les Paul before. You've seen it on the channel. And every single P90 I've ever plugged in has been really noisy and it comes with the territory. That's fine. Noise is fine. Noise is okay. G get on with it. <laughs> but this one, when I first plugged it in, I thought it was, I thought something was wrong. I thought it wasn't working properly. I thought maybe there was a grounding issue, maybe something like that, because it was just too quiet. And then I Googled it and it turns out that it's a new pickup that Seymour Duncan has developed with Jared James Nichols it's called the JJN P90 Silencer. Brilliant. What else have we got? Beautiful ebony board. The frets are done really, really sur surprisingly well. Again, if the message wasn't clear enough, Gibson did not pay for this video. There is no uh, script that I have to follow. All of these opinions are my own and I'm generally honest. Back to the frets. Really well done. Not a single uh, sharp fret edge anywhere. Not a single buzz anywhere on the neck. Like This came like, I, I made zero adjustments. We've got a plastic nut or is it tusk or is it, I, I don't know. It's not bone. It's fine. We have the Blues Power logo. That's his shtick. That's his thing. The diamond inlay that Gibson does as well, and the new-ish Epiphone heads. It's not the headstock that Greeny got, you know, the same Gibson thing. And on the back, you've got the gorgeous Stingray, which I'm a huge fan of on any Les Paul, and his signature. Guitar says it's 100% inspected and set up in the USA by E, the letter E, number nine. And a huge upgrade from the old one, the old Glory, his old model, is you've got Grover locking tuners now, stock. Gorgeous Pelham Blue back and front, no locking strap buttons, but honestly, I couldn't care less. And again, I kind of want to go back to how well this was set up right out of the box. And it, this wasn't really a demo. In fact, this came from the Gibson garage. This came from the wall of the Gibson garage. I reached out to Gibson. I'm like, man, this is a cool guitar. I'd like to review it. Would you send me one? Gibson says, sure. And then I get something in the mail from Gibson garage. So it literally came off the wall, meaning it, it, this was a, a, I think it was a display model. So it shows you that, man, if they all come like this, we've really come a long way with Epiphone, which they really have. I used to have an old Epiphone custom and it just wasn't good. Like, frankly, it wasn't good. It was, I think, from like 2014 or something like that. It just, I never bonded with it. I kept it for like a month or two, and after a while, I just sold it. But this is night and day. I don't know what they're doing at Epiphone, but this is night and day from old Epiphones. It has quality pots on the inside. There's one pet peeve that I have with, you know, custom Les Pauls made from Epiphone, and I used to have a Epiphone, for 10 years I had it, an Epiphone Sheraton, is that the buttons, the, 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 the inlays buttons, the inlays stop on the 15th, and they don't go any further. I hate that, and I used to always do, I used to always take a Sharpie, I can't with this one because it's not mine, but I used to always take a Sharpie and put my own dots at the end because I, I play a lot of stages, I play a lot of stages that are dark, I get lost, I'm not good, <laughs> and I get lost easily. If I don't have dots and inlays, I will get lost. So if this was mine, I would absolutely add either a sticker on here on the, on the fretboard or do the whole Sharpie thing. I wish they changed that, but they're going for the look. Neck feels incredible. Neck doesn't feel like, you know, the classic, for, again, I'm talking from back in the day, that classic D-shape thing that Epiphone did, that was, as well, something I could never bond with. It never felt round. It never felt like my hand belonged there. It always felt like it was just d done as an afterthought. This doesn't have that, and I'm happy about it. Now, the other thing that everybody's been talking about is the price difference between the gold one and the blue one. I think the gold one is 750 bucks, and this is 1,000. This is 999. Can you justify the price bump by adding locking tuners, a Seymour Duncan P90 pickup, and I believe American Pots. I don't know, that's, and also, that's also not for me to decide about your wallet, I don't know. Personally, I would go for the gold one because of the color, really. And locking tuners and I are not 
friends. I don't like locking tours. I much prefer the regular do two wines, three wines, call it a day thing. Locking tuners are never a make it or break it for me, but it could be for you. So I can't make a decision based on your wallet, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, if you were to buy the pickup by itself, I think Seymour Duncan sells it for 200, 150, something like that. The locking tuners themselves, they're usually around the $80, $90 mark. So I guess that's where the money is. Plus you get the Pelham Blue back and forth. So again, I don't know. I've, I have read the controversies. Oh my God, I can't believe it's more expensive than the other one just because of the color. It's not just because of the color. There's a few added accoutrements. And this is where the portion of the review ends. I could talk to you about it for a hundred days, but let's actually hear what it sounds like in isolation. I'm going to go through the either the Silkton or the Friedman because behind me there's a Fender amp and behind me here there's a PRS amp and I would not like to cause any controversy. I'm going to go with neutral Switzerland here, either Silkton or Friedman. In fact, I'm going to go through the Friedman because it, it sounds great through the Friedman. It sounds closest to what Jared James Nichols plays. Let's get to it.
<laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, you have now heard the blues power in Pelham Blue back and forth from Jared James Nichols from Epiphone. This thing, this thing's gonna make waves, man, because you're getting a lot for the money. Hear me out. $1,000 is not a drop in the bucket. We're not talking about 200 bucks here. We're talking about $1,000. That's a lot of money, okay? That's a thousand single dollar bills. But in my opinion, and I've only been playing for 20 years, I know someone watching right now, you, you have been playing for longer than I've been alive. I know that. And you're probably 10 times better than I am. I know that. In my humble 20 year opinion, I think this is worth the $1,000 mark. Now, would I buy this one or would I buy this? If I were to buy one, would I buy this one or would I buy the $750 one? I've never lied to you once on this channel and I won't start now. I would go for the gold one. I would go for the gold one because the quality is there. We're not changing woods. We're not changing frets. We're not changing any of that. We're losing locking tuners. Personally, hate them. Too bad and we're losing the uh, Seymour Duncan, I think. We're losing the Seymour Duncan pickup. Man, I could buy a Seymour Duncan later on used. <laughs> like, I could buy a Seymour Duncan, and it, it sounds incredible, it sounds so good, but I really don't mind the noise. I mean, I could buy a normal Seymour Duncan, or I can go for, I, I think the regular one comes with an American Gibson one, and if it doesn't, there's a million other companies that make pickups and I, I could buy a pickup. I mean, I love blue guitars and all and I, I have a Pelham blue back and forth Gibson Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul custom. I, I'd go for the gold one. <laughs> but I mean, hey, if blue's your thing and you like it and you like and, and, and locking tuners are your thing and this JJN Silencer P90 from Seymour Duncan, that, if that is your thing, then by all means, get this guitar. You, you saw how many tones, but it only has one pickup. Can, do, the amount of tones that comes out of this, you have a volume and a tone knob. Are you kidding me? That's infinite different tones with it. And, and, and run it through pedals? <laughs> Don't get me started on pedals now. If you do decide to buy it, I have left you a link in the description. Hear me out. This link is not an affiliate link. This link does not get me commission. This link does not get me, this link has nothing to do with me. It's a link that sends you to this website. That is all. If this was your first time on the channel, welcome. If it's not, welcome back. It is a pleasure doing this video for Gibson slash Epiphone. I've been using the word Gibson and Epiphone interchangeably in this video. We know they're the same person. <laughs> and if we don't, they're the same person. <laughs> It's a pleasure doing this video for them and it's a pleasure having you here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing. We do a lot of reviews. We do a lot of non-reviews. Next week, I'm gonna to go to NAMM, okay? And I'm gonna take a camera with me and we're gonna show you what NAMM looks like from a regular person's perspective because you can see all these fancy YouTubers looking at NAMM things, but I'm gonna be looking at the interesting NAMM things, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Basically where the nearest food court is. I have been Buddy Blues. You have been the people of the blues. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, thank you for watching.